July 2019 was an interesting time for Plants vs Zombies 2. It was a personal milestone in that it literally birthed my Plants vs Zombies 2 rank series you are watching right now and the game was hit with two substantial changes, namely Battles being named to Arena and Cabbage Pole being moved to the tutorial. It also added two of the most broken plants in the entire game, Poker and Impair, as well as a third groundbreaking one, the Blastberry Vine. What? Yep, a plant that can be planted on top of others, preserving lawn space and, usually, having an additional ability. More vines would soon follow, with the presumption being that there was going to be one for every plant family, but this never happened with the last one to date being added in summer 2021. So I will rank all of the vines, Tim and Jeremy vine and the band the vines aside. I'm going into Vlogspot, let's go. Bottom spot of the list goes to Power Vine. It's unfortunate that the last vine added is the worst one by a mile, but that's the only spot I can justify giving to this guy, who looks cool, but overall is essentially just a worse version of the P vine. He has an interesting gimmick in that multiple in the same column can link up and buff them so they fire triple burst shots instead of one, but Power Vine is no citrus cactus. This trait also isn't as good as it sounds, as a network of vines can be disrupted pretty badly by zombies such as Mecha Football. His plant food is also pretty underwhelming as it just sprays a bunch of laser bolts everywhere without really making much of an impact. And the EM Peach effect sounds good, but just use an EM Peach. The fact that Power Vine is a ranged plant means its EMP radius won't usually reach far enough to disable mechanical zombies, and plants can makeshift one further forward doesn't seem worth it. Number 7 is Gloom Vine. Now this low ranking is somewhat disappointing given I was actually really excited for this plant when he was announced for the game. As I'd once stated I would only accept a PVZ2 rebrand of the Gloom Shroom if it was made into a vine style plant, and lo and behold, Gloom Vine arrived. However, does the plant live up to the hype? Probably not. The damage output on this guy compared to the Gloom Shroom is notably worse, which doesn't make up for it having a cumulatively cheaper sun cost, and it doesn't work as well with the OG due to the game having a high amount of zombies that insta-kill plants, or are otherwise largely unaffected by melee plants. While I would choose them over Fat Beat, Snapdragon also exists and is usually the better choice for an area of effects multi-lane attacker. Gloomy Vine Boy also had the addition of powering shadow plants, which is a pretty good workaround for the levels where you can't use Moonflower, such as Last Stand, so the likes of Dusk Club aren't totally out of the window. However, he does have the conflicting state of being a close range plant when many of the shadow plants are typically planted at the back. Although he is quite good for zombies that get to the front line, such as Prospect from Jetpack Zombies, so he is more versatile than you might think. It's just that when it comes to vines, he is kind of overshadowed, ironically. 6 is a Blastberry Vine, the first of many, well, discounting the OG Pumpkin in this case. He is essentially a junior melon pole that can be planted on top of other plants, so one of his biggest uses is to conserve space on the lawn. His damage is pretty average, and new players may be pretty frustrated to find that he dies in like 2 bites, so it's highly recommended to use him quite far back, especially because he's the most fragile vine. He acts as a pretty solid doubler to your main offensive plants, and the shots of splash so it's a good idea to use him with powerful plants to thin the hordes. His splash radius and bomb look count also increase with leveling, which is nice despite how long it takes to level up a siege plant. Overall, he's a great first plant to introduce the player to the concept of vines, despite being slightly outdone by some of the others. Number 5, I've got the Pyre Vine. This guy can be boiled down to a jack o' lantern lights plant that deals worse damage in exchange for a dramatically cheaper price tag, and of course, the ability to be planted on top of others. This is a great add-on to melee plants, especially ones that specialise with individual enemies as the Pyre provides solid group control, so it will provide good teamwork. Being a fire plant, he can also warm nearby plants, although ever since this ability was added to the Snapdragon, it kind of falls to the wayside. Compared to some of the other vines, he does seem quite weak, which does drop him down on the list a bit, and this is very evident when comparing him to the aforementioned Jack O' Lantern, but as well as ease of use, Pyre has the benefit of never overheating, so you don't have to worry about large gaps in which he is vulnerable. Into the top half of the list, and first up is the Pumpkin. Now this guy seems like a bit of an anomaly in the list given he doesn't look like a vine or has vine in his name. However, he functions like one and is officially classed as so given he is essentially a reinforcement family vine. People yearn for this plant to return for ages, and for good reason given he's the perfect tool to protect melee plants as well as utility plants such as Magnetroom that have limited range, or Zoibin pod in the middle so the Zomboids can get to the zombies quicker. 
You can even plant them on top of other defensive plants to make a defense that's nearly invincible. Hell, go crazy by putting him on a tool nut and then plant food in them both for maximum protection. He's also quite good in the back most lanes for zombies that get far into the lawn, especially imps thrown by gargantuas since they always land in the third column. Overall, he may seem slightly inferior to the original pumpkin just because the second game has so many more zombies that pumpkin gets insta-killed or countered by, plus the selection of stunning plants makes defensive plants a little bit less useful, but still a great addition to many setups. Top 3, and first up I've got the Explodo Nut. Stiff competition now with the top 3, and I can already sense a handful of you being surprised I didn't actually put an explosive plant at the top spot. He is pretty much a compact, albeit more expensive version of the Exploder Nut with the same damage numbers by default, and he also has the perk of doing damage upon being planted. His explosions also knock back zombies, although it's only about the same as a spring bean, so it's not all that impressive unless you decide to combo him with Blover. Also he has half the health of the nut, so he serves as somewhat of a middle ground between the nut's ability to round up zombies before killing them all, and the cherry bomb's ability to just blow them up without further ado. While the initial planting explosion does provide a good reason to use him over Exploder Nuts, where this vine perhaps falls is that he's not all that effective at actually being the vine. Since his purpose is to be eaten, it takes away from the vine's defensive attributes, so he's not that useful for protecting plants since you will have to keep replanting him. However, he is handy for quickly whacking on a plant in danger, especially in the literal sense due to his knockback quickly dispatching them, but overall, he gains a respectable third spot. The second highest vine is the Shine Vine, otherwise known as Gold Leaf, but actually versatile. It does hold the distinction of being the most complicated vine, but damn, its sun amplification is insane. When planted on most plants, it basically acts like a faux sunflower, producing 50 sun. That's okay, but where it really shines, haha, <laughs> is that when it's planted on top of other sunflowers, it heavily boosts their sun production, so it's a great way to bolster sun production without having to chew too much of the lawn up. This can be pretty insane when using with twin sunflower or sunshroom, especially with plant food. It also has an additional feature of being able to stun zombies very briefly upon contact and produce a tiny bit of sun. This sounds weak, but it does give it some defense if using them further forward, plus it at least has more health than the blastberry vine. The shine vine also has synergy with magnifying glass, allowing it to attack automatically without spending sun, Although that does sacrifice the sun production, and also doesn't count towards increasing the grass's plant food duration. It also has the annoyance of not working with Moonflower, but besides that, an absolute powerhouse plant. And taking the top spot is Pea Vine. Why? Because... Arena Combos. One of the most disgusting combos in the history of the game is the triple threat of Torchwood, any pea shooter, and the up to 11 king himself, Pea Vine. Add appeasement to this to make a fatal 4-way combo of absolute lunacy to take the already destructive 1.5 times multiplier to freaking quadruple damage and you've got an instant win in most arena tournaments, whether appeasement is on the buffs or not. Also, despite his mouth being visibly in front of the torchwood, his peas are ignited anyway when planted on top of one. The guy isn't limited to use with just other pea shooters, he works with all appeasement plants. So he will fit right in place with Bowl and Bulb and Roto Barber strategies, to name a few. He obviously is still a stray shooter, so he is weak to jesters and excavators, but besides that, this plant is pretty damn broken. And I'm not just talking about in arena, I'm talking about the whole damn game. That's my list. How would you rank the vines? Join my Discord, which is linked in the description, and here's to hoping this list won't go out of date if they add any more vines. I've been Golden Ninja Vlogspot, talk to you soon.